say the world is crazy, won't tell you it ain't no lies. You say I'm dumb and lazy, but you won't look into my eyes. Tell your friends that I betrayed you, curse my rotten soul to goddamn hell. Morning, Professor McCallum. Hey, Walter. Father Ramirez. I got him trapped inside until the church gives me a raise. So, he's in there forever. Lord, I've been to see. I'm on my knees and crying. Open up your arms and take me. Morning, Dean. You didn't have to pass by the market, did you? And they were giving away scratches. <laughs> you put too much faith in gambling. Lottery ain't gambling. It's just throwing a little money away until they throw a whole bunch back at you. Yeah. That makes sense. You don't know me well. Troubles that I'm chasing. You don't know me well. What if the very existence of a random act was proof it was part of a pattern? Everything, a missing piece to a puzzle we have not stood back far enough to recognize for what it is. So, in 2008, was that your first trip outside the country? Yeah. I think I was about nine or ten when I saw a film about pandas, and after that I, I always dreamed of going to China. My boyfriend and I had planned the trip with some of our friends for after graduation, but uh, we broke up before that. Uh, my other friends insisted that we go anyway, go early, to cheer me up. We were in the eastern Sichuan province near Chengdu, May 12th, officially 2.28 in the afternoon. Not that I knew that at the time. It was a 7.9. 69,000 died, 375,000 injured. They say over a million dwellings collapsed. A mountain came down and swallowed a train. Cody was yelling for Caitlin and I to get back to the bikes, but we didn't make it. Three trees collapsed around me, which formed the pocket where I was buried. I couldn't feel my legs at all or move them. I remember crying, but I, I had never made any sound. Maybe I just couldn't hear. I had no idea how much stuff was on top of me. Um, how long until they found you? Fifty-six hours. I was in hospitals over there, then over here for 11 months. I left with two severe surgical scars and a demoralizing sense that I had inherited some new responsibility, the exact nature of which I was ignorant. And neither of your companions survived? No. 
they were part of that 69,000. You were very, very fortunate. How so? Was I fortunate that my boyfriend dumped me so that I could be dragged to China in time not to miss the earthquake? You can't even say it was fortunate for him that he dumped me because if we hadn't broken up, then we wouldn't have gotten there until after the earthquake. So, so was it his fault that my friends died? When was my fate sealed? Well, what do you think? Bones make a harrowing tale to shake. And I've seen yours and you've seen mine. I was getting worried. I had one of those emergencies. I had to meet with some parents. Let me guess. The Belgian boy whose name you can't tell me. It's nothing personal. Ugh. When you teach special ed or special needs, the state won't allow you to disclose student information. No exceptions. I didn't make up the rules. Can you at least use code names then? Like Bert. Bert the Belgian boy. So who'd he bite this time? Who'd Bert bite? I think that was just a one-time thing. That happened more than once. I don't know where you find the patients. Special ed isn't easy, but at least with them I win every game. So teaching the handicap is good for your ego? It's not. Really. Most of them can still draw better than me. Oh shit, I didn't tell you. I ran into Mary Lee. Guess who wants to haul our asses out to Boston for New Year's? I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing at the end of the year yet. Hey, what's on your car? What is that? That is the textbook definition of creepy. Must be my lucky day. keep them up here so you can enjoy them too. Wasn't a surprise though. You never forget. Can't be certain. My mind could go any day now. Never. You'll be spouting words of wisdom long after your funeral. Hopefully that doesn't disturb people too much. That's why I changed my mind about burying you in the garden. Did you tell me if you had birthday plans tonight? No, I didn't. And no, I don't. You're stuck with me all day. Sucks to be you.
did you get in here? You let me in. Please. My father's upstairs. He's a very sick man. Why should that make any difference? So guess what I dreamt about last night? Okay, we'll play that game. But then we've got to talk about Peggy and Marlene. Why? What are they going through now? Uh, in a minute. First, I'm guessing your dream. All right. Did it involve flying burritos? Some rubberized banana monster? Holden Parks. I dreamt about Holden Parks. I can't remember the last time I even thought about him. I'm surprised you don't dream about that more often. I would. Do you ever go out there anymore? To Cutter's Grove? Not since then. And I used to love that place as a kid. It's a shame. It only takes one memory to fuck everything up. Detective Lamb, go ahead, what do we got?
Well, the day's off to a good start. What? No jokes today. Not this time. Hey, we've seen it all. Maybe now we have. You guys do this? No. I know, right? Guess when you thought people couldn't get any sicker. Am I looking at what I think I'm looking at? Afraid so. Think the number one is a female. I guess mid to late twenties. Can't tell you yet whether she was killed before or as a result of the, for lack of a better word, surgery. Think the number two's head has been implanted into, enveloped by, anyway, merged with her uterus. Kind of a reverse birth thing, I'd speculate. Number two is an aged adult male, 60s, 70s maybe. Been dead a couple hours. We haven't recovered the male's body yet, but I'd wager that's his blood on the bed. The whole body's missing? Crazy probably didn't want it distracting from his mise en scene. That another French film term? Certainly is. Sure as hell gives Jack the Ripper a run for his money. Like Jack, there was substantial expertise. Savage as this is, it wasn't simple butchery. Most crazies couldn't even find the uterus, let alone stretch and sew. Definitely not some drugged up whack job with a warped sense of humor. Although, trying to stretch an unimpregnated uterus around an adult head whew, suggests a twisted sense of optimism. himself, but according to his wallet, he's Dean McCallum and he's licensed to drive. So who's Casey Emerson? Next victim, first victim, we don't know yet. As soon as the officer ascertained he had no injuries to account for the blood, and he was rational but choosing to offer no explanation, they brought him in. Forensics got his clothes, they're doing his car. How did they know he was rational if he only said the one thing? Officer said he gave, quote, visual indication of clear comprehension and consent through distinctive facial expressions and gestures, unquote. Was fucking Shakespeare the first on the scene? I want that guy to write up my reports. Wasn't a guy. Officer Diane Crenshaw, one of us. Ah, would have to be a woman. Dean McCallum? I'm Detective Jared Lamb, and this is Detective Reina Herrera. And we have a lot to talk about. Casey Emerson. So who's Casey Emerson? We know you're Dean McCallum, 
You have no idea who I really am. According to your ID, we know exactly who you are. I wonder if I'm going to have the patience for this. You don't have much of a choice. If you cooperate, this could go fairly quickly. Yeah, we might as well keep things pleasant. But that wouldn't make you very happy now, would it? Let's try and stick to the important questions. If you won't tell us about Casey Emerson, maybe you care to tell us about Heather Kadar, age 26, or her father, Abel Kadar, age 62, or maybe how you ended up at Rita's Cafe, covered in their blood. That was their blood you were bathed in, wasn't it? Or is there someone else we should be looking for? This is meaningless at the moment, so I'm going to go. You better sit your ass back down before I put you down. <clears throat> Casey Emerson? So let's talk about Casey Emerson. And what are we waiting for? We have an ID on Casey Emerson. At least he hasn't wired up yet. Make sure we're digging up everything we can on this guy and ride the lab until we know just exactly whose blood he had on him. Let's pray to God it's just the two. Yes? I'm Detective Jared Lamb. Are you Casey Emerson? All day. I got a call, so I guess I'm expecting you. I just need to ask you a few questions. Come on up. Come on in. It'll be open. Fourth floor. Emerson? The officer made it sound like it was kind of a background check thing, but I'm guessing it's more than that, right? You do know Dean McCallum, is that correct? I would say that's a very big yes. I'm going to need some additional information. Sure. Well, whatever you're here for, it can't be Dean's fault because he is the best person I know, period. Or has something happened to him? I can't discuss an ongoing investigation, but he's in very serious trouble. And if I'm going to help him, I need to know a lot more than I currently do. Like, how do you know him? From school, originally. I wasn't the most together kid, so JC, till I figured it out. But I love to write poetry and lyrics and stuff. Dean, Mr. McCallum, was my lit and comp instructor. But like I said, I wasn't the most together kid. Did some stupid things. Hurt some people. It seems like I was always doing that. There used to be this place I would go when I'd get into a mood. Excuse me, Miss Emerson. Hey. You caught me trying to offset the fact I can't go a day without ice cream. Looks like you're doing okay. Oh, I had a delusion of trying a marathon before I got too old, but I'm pretty certain my legs would fall off. And I'll bet you came out here for the privacy, so I'll let you have it. It's okay. Use me as an excuse to take a break. Keep your legs attached a bit longer. It would gross the class out if you came in all legless, cripple leg. Yeah, might gross me out too. That probably sounded insensitive. I should have said ambulation challenged. 
which is a pleasant turn of phrase. If I were a writer, I'd steal it. Is uh, that what you're doing, writing? Please tell me you're writing. It's nothing. Maybe you shouldn't say that quite so reflexively. Unless it's a shopping list. Is it? And for some reason, I found I could talk to him effortlessly and be totally honest. With my friends, especially the guys. It wasn't always so easy, but with Dean, I could always be myself. He was incredibly supportive, helped me get focused, and at the end of the year, we stayed very close friends. But that's not all, is it? But not what you think. Not really. I was young. I was alone and lonely. I guess I started using him as kind of a surrogate. How much of a surrogate? Nothing physical. Nothing. We talked a lot as it was, but I'd be calling all the time. Tell him I need him. Tell him how much I miss him. I didn't make it easy. And I didn't have those kind of feelings. I mean, he's a lot older, but I might have needed him to have them. But here's the thing, he never acted on any of it. Never even tried to kiss me. Once he took my hand and I knew he was hooked, but nothing else. We talked about it, but he wanted our relationship to remain a positive influence in my life something that might be helping me grow, and he wouldn't risk that for something he might want. Or need. About a year later, I got another boyfriend, went off to state. We kind of went our own ways, and then... And then I was diagnosed with cancer. I'm sorry. Yeah, so was I. Bit of an understatement to say I got depressed. Boyfriend couldn't handle my negative outlook. I barely managed the first round of chemo. I finally decided to kill myself. Have you held Shaver's hand? It burns like the sun is setting on yours, like he swallowed the twilight or devoured July. But I even fucked that up. They told me there was an open flame or something, but I didn't notice. I have no idea how he found out. But here's where I thought God played the cruel trick. My cancer had gone into complete remission. And look what I'd done to myself. And Dean, he understood my anger, but believe it or not, he managed to make me see a bigger picture. That as hard as it was to understand why these things had happened, I had to have faith that there was a reason. He helped me out of the dark I'd made for myself. And I will love him forever for that. We still talk occasionally, but once I was firmly standing in the Lord's light, I like to think he went off to be of guidance to others. That's Dean McCallum, if it's any help. So then I told her, if you don't have the time to do the work, then don't bother volunteering. I mean, how clueless can some people be? And then Eleanor, you know how I feel about her. You know, you could at least have the decency to tell me that you're ignoring me. I was listening. No, I got it. You've had a rough day, so me and my day can go fuck ourselves. That's fine. It's not like that. I'm just 
thinking. I'm sorry. Is this something that you're going to want to talk about or something that you're going to want to keep to yourself or something that you need to shield me from because it's hard to keep track? if you pay attention to everything around you. Shouldn't you be paying attention to your books? De Benedetto runs these mock trials like real trials. They'll be one on personality, not scholarship. Yeah, but I think he'll grade on scholarship. Since when are you late? I had a quick doctor's appointment. Anything I should know about? OBGYN. You want pictures? I love pictures. But I think they look weird on the desk next to my wife. Then keep your wife off your desk. <laughs> Besides, what would... What's his name? Lucas say about that? Lucas has no say over what I do with my lady part. He's just a sperm donor. You're cold. So you're going through with that. You're going for a test? You know, they've got those tests you can do yourself. I have a job with insurance, so I don't have to pee on a fucking stick. Does Lucas even know? Yeah, what you got? Thanks. Our guy's waiting for us. I spoke with friends and neighbors. It seems McCallum was respected and pretty well liked. Yeah, well, Bundy was charming, and Gacy was a great clown at kitty parties. And Dahmer had quite an appetite. Yes, I talked to Casey Emerson. Why was that so important to you? We'll return to that at the appropriate time. Right now, there is an even more important question. Could it be why did you kill that woman? Close. Why that particular woman might be more important. So you admit you killed Heather Kadar? I went out to breakfast covered in her blood. Was there really any doubt? But it wasn't only Miss Kadar's blood on you. And just for the record, you still didn't answer my question. It's vitally important we're clear about this. When you ask for a confession, are you expecting, are you asking for, uh, <clears throat> Strike that. Do you believe that what you want is the truth? No matter how disturbing. I think I might like the truth. And would you be content with just the one incident? What you got to tell us there, Dean? You got a dozen bodies stashed under the floorboards. If you seriously consider the number of my victims, you would be rendered catatonic. <laughs> now you're just showing off. I could believe that. You don't mind if I take some notes, do you? But this whole conversation is already being recorded. Yeah, that's true. But I still like taking my own notes. I don't like to waste a lot of time re-watching video. In fact, I don't much like wasting time at all. So why don't you start by giving us a number? How many people have you killed, Dean? Complete with details only the killer would know. Starting with the most recent locals, Meredith Buckley, 36. 
at uh, the restroom of Texaco Station. Four days earlier, she'd let an acquaintance have sex with her 12-year-old daughter in exchange for crystal meth. She couldn't stop hearing her daughter cry, even though her daughter never did. Uh, there was a note about the scene. It wadded up in the rear pocket of her jeans. Rube Diego, 61, at his home on Crescent Drive. The bedroom door was suspiciously locked from the inside. Although he lived alone, he lived with a great deal of fear. What watching her sad excuse for cable news will do. I'm going to need a great big bubbly beverage. This is really how you want me to do this? And also look into Ambreen Rashid, last seen with her cousin Sadia, and take the stairs. Like I said, I was hoping we could just start with a number. Well, the number would just be inconceivable for you. You might be surprised what I can conceive of. I know exactly what you're capable of conceiving. He's fucking with us. What'd you get? It's bullshit. Buckley was found in the Texaco restroom, but she's a suicide. She razored her wrist. Diego was a fucking heart attack, and at 375 pounds, not a big fucking surprise. And Rashid, all we got is a fucking address. Was there a note with Buckley? Yeah, a suicide note that said she killed herself because she's scum. I mean, the only weird thing is how the hell did he know about these? Both calls just came in, like in the last few hours. Follow up on Rashid. Name came up in connection to an investigation. Try not to scare anybody. I stopped him at 14. He's twisted and he's fucking with us. Plain and simple. How did you know about these people? How the hell did you know a brain Rashid was blown out of her goddamn skin by some crazy Koran spouting talent 10,000 miles away visiting cousins in Pakistan when her family was just notified by the State Department? More like 7,383 miles, depending. So you're a walking GPS. That doesn't impress me. You would have to. Those numbers came quick. It wasn't funny, but it was fast. Uh, I could have come up with a funny retort, because I also know the first rule of comedy. I don't give a shit what you think. Do you want more names? So. All those people die People recently, die every but day. But you don't get credit for them if that's what you want. So let's go back to something simple. On or about Tuesday the 7th of this month, why did you murder Heather Kadar and her father Abel? It's Dean McCallum's fingerprints and DNA you're gonna find it all over the scene. You should ask him. Don't start trying to run some other bullshit down on us. Keep playing games and I will come over there and scrub fuck the inside of your skull. You didn't learn anything talking to Ms. Emerson? Detective Herrera, do I seem at all like the Dean McCallum whose friends and neighbors you spoke to? Even you must see something's not quite right. So why don't you clarify things? All right. Dean McCallum couldn't tell you a thing about those murders. If I let you speak to him now, he'd only remember blacking out. We already know you're McCallum. You got his ID, you got his face, and you sure as shit have his fingerprints. I don't really look a bit like him, but I can see how you might be confused. So you're saying there's somebody other than McCallum in there? Sounds like it. So you're a split personality now. Little Dean's gone into hiding, and Big Bad, whoever the fuck you are, is sitting in the control seat? So what do we call you? <laughs> Doesn't matter. There are so... Any names? And wrong answer. You're supposed to be a completely distinct, separate personality with name, background, your own favorite flavor of ice cream, that kind of shit. I never said I was a product of dissociative identity. What's that? The proper clinical term for your multiple personality disorder. You haven't done your homework. So if you're not Dean's secret tough guy persona, protecting him in moments of crisis, 
then we're right back to the just plain Dean McCallum. The evidence says you are. It's only a body. That doesn't even work. What the fuck does that mean? The wires aren't connected and uh, there isn't even any power coming in. No, what do you mean it's only a body? Oh dear, cat's out of the bag. So what do you call me? I could choose a name, but everything ends up being blatantly symbolic. You could call me Verborgen. That's Dutch. I like Dutch. You speak Dutch? This is one of the languages I speak. Ich spreche auch Deutsch. What are you are? No Hongo Hanasmas? How many languages you fluent in? Yeah, as many as you got. 6,917. Uh, no, wait. A papery thin old man just died in Highland, New Guinea. So, only 6,960 living languages. Yeah, I also speak all the dead ones. Bullshit. You want to test me? What did you mean, only a body? Think of it as uh, something I chose to wear so that we could sit here and have this little chat. Cut the games and cut the shit. Who do you want us to think we're talking to? Who do you know who could be capable of all that I have done? Any number of sick fucking psychos. You humans have such a difficult time contemplating the larger picture. So if I caught the none too subtle hint, you're not human. In this body I am. Outside this body I am considerably more. The devil made you do it. For me, it's uh, three times. Once more than I've drawn my weapon in the line of duty. I don't know why you even bother. From what I understand, your gun fires blanks anyway. And I've always been nice to you. I'm Dr. Waverly. You must be the team that brought us another guest. That's right. Well, I'd ask you to dig yourself out a chair and have a seat. But I'm on my way out. I no longer do 12-hour shifts, except for emergencies. And if you guys have family, I suggest you adopt the same attitude. The shit that is swirling around today will still be swirling around tomorrow. <laughs> I'll drink to that. I want to give you a heads up, Doctor. This guy, Dean McCallum, we know he's a multiple murderer, possibly a serial. Well, thanks for sending him to me. Okay, full restraints, and I'll have him evaluated by staff that is bulletproof. He wants us to believe that he's possessed, languishes under the power of the malign one. I was raised a Catholic. Well, it's a great motive for actions that are a little bit too taboo for a fragile psychic to tolerate. They're not exactly falling off trees, but we have seen our share. But this guy's different. Or at least his idea of a demon is different. If you can get him to growl and snarl and spin his head around, I'll give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll have staff do a prelim on him tonight, and I'll do a full workup on him myself in the morning. But right now, I have a parent-teacher conference and hopefully some semblance of dinner waiting. Are these your two girls, Dr. Waverly? Just the one. Catherine, ages five and ten. They grow up fast. Nothing postpones that. i
sun I had seasons Before I was blue I had dreams I had reasons you should have ever have gotten pregnant. They're taking him back. No need for you to keep him longer. Oh, I have learned as much as I want. Need. Whatever. Now he's going back to your playground. From a legal point of view, is your suspect both sane and fully competent? I would have to say, without a doubt. I have rarely interviewed a more rational, self-aware individual. But I am very disconcerted by this particular man. I told you he was different and smart. <laughs> High intelligence is not unusual with a sociopathic personality. Unlike most, McCollum wasn't concerned about proving his own brilliance. He wasn't interested in winning me over or even defending himself. Hardly any indication of pathological narcissism of any degree. I wouldn't believing you're a demon automatically qualify as some type of megalomania. Most megalomaniacs are so confident, they are clueless as to the degree that they are revealing themselves. A confirmed egotist is never worried about being egotistical because he has every right to be. In contrast, McCallum was all too aware and apologetic when he would catch himself expressing something that might appear megalomaniacal. He even referenced his vanity and keeping his pride in check. Most will subconsciously avoid calling attention to their symptoms for fear of giving their listeners any ideas. In contrast, there wasn't anything McCallum wasn't willing to discuss. Come on, doctor, did he admit to being Dean McCallum or not? Well, he did admit to being in McCallum's body, but he did maintain he was not Dean McCallum. And even referenced that personality with disdain, bordering on disgust. Did he say anything about the Kadar murders? Yes, he did allude to there being some supernatural influence. Yes, yes, yes. And at that point, one is tempted to throw every other observation right out the window and just step bug nuts lunatic on his committal form. Because he's either certifiably insane or he's possessed. That's why I wanted to stress that legally, I don't think he is insane. He's also aware of right and wrong, of acceptable societal behavior, of the consequences of his actions. He just has a different view of them though. He's even aware of how his claims will be received by others. But of course, there is the leap into believing that there is an entity possessing you. So are you saying he believes it? He believes he's possessed? I introduced the concept of proving. They usually withdraw from that suggestion. 
but he began to hint about knowing things. About me. About my past. Which is not an uncommon manipulative tool because most people are inexorably captivated when they become the focus of conversation. So I ignored it. And when he was in the midst of the next topic, I brought it back up. You know, to more or less call us bluff. But he didn't backpedal. And he didn't hesitate. He just asked me if I was prepared. But there's no way that I could have been prepared. He started with what you would have thought a charlatan would have ended with, you know. The emotional landmine. You see, I have, I had two children, twins. Douglas didn't live much past when these pictures were taken. I don't believe in clinging to tragedies, in needless, painful questions from staff or patients for that matter. Yet, McCallum knew all about it. Specifics. And then he began to tell me other things, things about my husband and about his past. Things that he told me years ago that I had to struggle to remember. Things that he didn't. That McCallum said I could ask him about later. It makes no logical sense. Not without massive planning and research and investigation and how could he be certain of what he would and would not have told me or even that he would have been brought here to me it was without a doubt one of the most disturbing moments of my life I am a proud skeptic. And yet it's terrifying to think how easily I could become a believer. No symbolism intended, just stretching the shoulders. The musculature of these bodies takes considerable getting used to. That would be in reference to our human bodies, because you're not human, right? As soon as you accept that, everything will make so much more sense. According to the hospital, there's not a single mark on you. No boils or scarring, wounds appearing without provocation. No horns, no tail, no cloven feet. Well, if you're a demon, how come there are no physical manifestations? Because that's how it was in The Exorcist. All those horror movies and scary books, it's propaganda. Demons and spirits are evil, and evil must be ugly. How black and white. And in your line of work, you know that's not how it is. Who was it said recently? Bundy was charming, and Gacy was a great clown for kitty parties. And Dahmer had quite an appetite. Ooh. 
I must have exceptional hearing. A little lame for a display of supernatural abilities, isn't it? I don't even know why we're wasting time talking to you. We have all the evidence we need for a conviction. So you can do shit and we have no idea how you do it. You're psychic, you're a mind reader, you're... What are those people who can see things far away? Astronomers? <gasps> Clairvoyant, that's it. Do I understand any of it? No. So what? You want something ostentatious. All right, Reina Herrera, how about this? Now that you've been informed that the seed has taken and you've uh, progeny growing inside, I will give you nine uneventful months of pregnancy. No morning sickness, no midnight crampings, no extreme hormonal fluctuations. It'll be a girl, by the way. But heed these words. Your only child will be born malformed and accursed. She'll survive, but she'll live a long life of endless physical suffering and emotional torment. Her limbs shriveled, no eyes in her head, her tongue cleaved in two. Holy fucking Christ. Guess you could say he knew which button of mine to push. Holy fucking Christ. I'm not sorry. It shouldn't be. No one's going to care when that tape disappears. You better go clean up. Dad, I don't think I can go back in there. I don't right think now. you should. Don't worry about it. I don't think there's any way. Don't even think about it. Don't. Just clean up. Go home. Yeah. And break the good news to Lucas. If it had been me, little man, there'd be fragments of your skull lying around this room. So be thankful. Now well, don't worry about Dean's face. I won't let it bruise. And uh, forget about the video. No one started the tape yet. Tape was started as soon as the officer brought you up from holding. Or stopped early. I need assistance down here.
Just what the hell are you talking about? I'm telling you all the shit I know. I walked into this just as much as you did. And nobody saw anything. That's what they're saying, and nobody fucking heard anything. But our guy's okay. Washington said there was like six guys. Every fucker in solitary holding except for your guy. And we're really talking about six bodies, six dead? That's what they're saying. And it's a fucking slaughterhouse. And I'll tell you, there's a bunch of hard-ass scumbags down there just about shitting themselves. They're thinking cop vigilante squad or something. But our guy's okay. What can I tell you? There's not a mark on him, but seriously, he was almost fucking crying. He was so scared. Well, we'll question him in the uh, course of our investigation. IA's crawling all over him, and they'll bring him to you when they're done. I counted seven. It's fucking insane to even ask. But, think McCallum? Psychic is one thing. Goddamn Harry Houdini is one thing. There's no way he could have slipped into and out of those cells and physically butchered seven inmates. I just spoke to Lieta and IA. And she said all the security cameras showed nothing but static from midnight on. All of them. These are the officers you've been speaking with. Thanks for your help. Well, they tell me you've had an interesting night. Well, uh, I don't know how I got in that cell, and uh, nothing anyone's telling me makes any sense. You are Dean McCallum, though. Teacher. Good guy about town? I'm Dean McCallum, yes. I am a teacher. And do you know Heather Kadar? Or her father, Abel Kadar? No, I'm afraid I don't. Do you know Casey Emerson? Oh, Casey Emerson, yes. Uh, I haven't talked to her in quite a while. Uh, wait. Does this have something to do with Casey? Is she all right? Yeah, but Heather's real fucked up. Not anymore, she isn't. But considering all the cutting that was done without anesthetic a few days ago, she was pretty fucked up then. Did you miss me? I thought you might like to meet Dean. Oh, you were Dean. But now he's... Uh, receded, submerged, retracted. I like that word. Okay. So now we're talking to the demon again. Great. You do that a lot, jumping in and out of the body? I do what I think appropriate. Even those things hardest to fathom have a reason, although it might be as slight as a reminder to myself not to despair of you all. Okay. So I'm asking the demon now. Did you have anything to do with the deaths of the men in custody? Either by direct action or conscious inaction. I have something to do with everyone's death. I don't even know how to respond to that. A bit grandiose claim, even for a demon, isn't it? You believe I'm a demon. Why must you think so small? Be ambitious in your suspicions. What, like the devil himself? Satan. Shit. If you're not just an everyday demon, if you're Lucifer, the Superman of demons, does that mean a regular old priest won't defeat you? Do we need to book the Pope? Whenever you start doubting, the humor comes out. Well, that's good. What makes you think a Catholic exorcism would work? What if I were a Jew and we were in Israel? But we're not. But if we were, 
You'd accept I was a divic and start running around looking for a quorum and a ram's horn. If you were ancient Sumerians, you'd be looking for a sorcerer to deal with a Gideen. If Islamic, I'd be a jinn. And what about the Hindus and the Chinese and all their spirits of pissed off dead people stealing healthy bodies? So, possession's a cultural thing? Except it can't be because Lucifer is Lucifer. Oh, I abhor how the faithful argue this. A Catholic will tell you that only the church, through God's grace, can drive out a demon. And if you say, what about the demons driven out in non-Catholic countries? They'll argue that since they weren't driven out by the church, they couldn't have been demons. Those people have mental issues. But if the same Catholic had been born in a different country and raised in a different religion, what would they be saying then? Are you suggesting that there's no one true religion? Not in the narrow sense you conceive of it. Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, of course there isn't. And you're an expert because? Because I am not just a demon. I'm not just the devil. I am God. Well, that's nice. But that's impossible. Why? Do you have the power to limit the power of God? Because he wouldn't do what you have done. All evidence to the contrary. If your God created a man who would do as I have done, wouldn't he be responsible for my actions? If he allowed an evil to act through me, isn't that the same thing? Do you presume to question the actions of your God? Raina! What? Whatever's happening to me? I, I don't know what. Is he in my head making me say things? Because I'm seeing things. You saw him too? Wait, what? The man with the bloody arms. That's Holden Parks. He became Holden Parks. You saw a man? I don't think I saw my mother. She was there. My mother. I don't know what to do about that. Shit, I was 15 years old when she committed suicide. You never told me that. What just happened? Do you think that means she is burning in hell? Because she did the one thing that she knew God could not forgive. Is that how that fucking, is that how he could bring her back like that? What you saw, what did she say? I don't think I even heard the first part. And she said something like, if God would abandon her so she would do what she did, wouldn't he be just as guilty? I'm thinking go back to Dr. Waverly and have her lock me up for a while. Let's get him out of here. Transfer him, shoot him, or something. I can't go back in there again. I can't. How can he make us see things like that? A fucking magician, or he gets in our head, or something, or whatever. What it boils down to is that he's evil. What he's done, what he makes us believe he can do, that's evil. How can we be certain of what we've seen? If the majority says you couldn't possibly have seen what you thought you saw, does that make them right? If your own brain is lying to you, would it ever allow you to suspect it might be? You want me to believe you're God? I am God. I do not require that you accept it, but your acceptance will make everything else easier. God is a loving, compassionate, just deity, not some 
vile, murderous fiend. According to whom? And in order to appear, you needed to possess the body of Dean McCallum? Chose to. It was a choice. Choices at the center of everything. What is it you require of me? Explain it away, because it does not logically fit into the universe you thought you knew. If you're God, why say you're a demon? I never said I was. But can't I be indulgent? You can't be God. Why? God wouldn't deny there's one true religion. What? Yours? Can you really accept your God would conceive a divine plan with a defect from the very beginning? Why would something as important as a way to salvation be restricted to one particular region and naturally limited by how fast or far a translation of it can be carried? Unless the majority of my creations are of no concern to me. And the millions who were born and lived and died before my way was revealed, they were wasted lives I couldn't be bothered with. Is it more comforting to believe your God is so callous or so careless? There are great truths, and they've been available to everyone before your kind packaged them into powerful and controlling religions. That goes against Everything the faithful are taught. Why would that make it less true? And who's been doing the teaching? No, I'm asking the questions here. You cannot be God, not the God. I stood in that bedroom. I saw what you did. Why would you commit such an unspeakable crime? Unthinkable. Make an impression, wouldn't it have to be? You creatures are at your most ingenious in the conception and execution of atrocities. You know, I also had to rein in the inclination to go too big. Because time and again, humanity has proven it's easier for you to ignore the colossal bloody crusades, the Belgian Congo, the Holocaust, genocide after genocide, wars and famines that strip humanity like a carcass the greedy desiccation of your very planet. These you compartmentalize as history or tragedies or in the best interests of security. And when the few spiritually hungry do question, the proffered response is usually, God moves in mysterious ways. There must be a purpose, but we can't see it. Well then keep looking, damn it. Solve the mystery, think, think, think. You do horrible things to get our attention. Simply allow them to happen more often than not. And for the contrast, for there to be reason to doubt, to consider, all those things you refuse to do. As soon as you run into contradiction or a paradox, you simply shut down your minds and look to one fable or another for a comfort that is usually little more than a confirmation that it's okay not to ask further questions. But if everyone did keep asking, We'd all go mad. You prefer blind ignorance over the risk of madness? Wow. 
Why Heather Kadar? Why her? Why an innocent woman and her father? I thought in your job, innocence was just an indicator. You hadn't dug deep enough. Are you saying there's some dark secret in Heather's past? Secret? No. Although everyone has darkness in them. Right. <laughs> Mankind is inherently evil. No, I simply acknowledged all of you have a darkness twisting within. For most, it manifests as solitary act. Cardinal thoughts, deceitful deeds, repressed hate, concealed prejudice, and the privacy of your rooms, the corridors of your minds, the isolation of your heart. For some, it is more profound, as in your case. Now I have a personal darkness. Oh, yes. So prevalent, it's almost tactile. The question is, is it a mystery even unto yourself? My sins, and there are plenty of them, are pretty much on the surface for all to see. Sins are symptoms. The iniquitous gloom is something else. Who is the man with the bloodied hands? And have you wondered why he is the cause of the acrimony in your soul? But we're not talking about me. We're discussing Heather Kadar. Are we? Here. You tell me about Cutter's Grove, and I'll tell you about Heather. You claim to be God, and you don't know about Holden Parks? I know everything about Holden Parks. What about you? I didn't grow up in an innocent world. We heard about things. But the scary stuff seemed far away until kids around town started disappearing. By the third or fourth one, our parents were scared. That made us scared. Holden Parks lived in my neighborhood. One of those men everybody sees and nobody knows. I guess I wasn't the most supervised kid in the community, and I loved playing in Cutter's Grove. We all did. too terrified to move until he was long gone. I ran home. Parents called the police. I took her back out there. That's it. How did they explain to you Holden Parks? In the grand scheme of things. He was an evil man who did terrible things. Did you accept that rather simplistic evaluation? He brutally murdered at least six children. What else was there to know? Indeed. Holden Parks isn't a bruised part of your soul because he was simply evil. Isn't he there because he was also the neighbor who loved his dog, because he shopped at the market with your mother and walked the same sidewalks? And if the good Lord was in his heaven and his angels were watching out for you, how could that be? Where was your good Lord when those children needed him? 
It was something as simple as evil, and God did nothing about it. How culpable is that? Regardless, why Heather? Do you know Heather's story about China, the earthquake? Heather would be because, for all intents and purposes, she would seem to have been protected by God at least once. Now she was touched twice. Maybe someone would consider asking, what are the odds? If you are God, then how come you slip in and out of the personal when you reference yourself? Sometimes it's me, mine. Just now you said she'd been protected by God at least once. I did not realize you were also part of the grammar police. And if everything so monumental, and you are everything, then how can you even find the time to shrink down to our puny human bag of flesh and organs to converse with me? And why? Valid point. So think of me as but a fragment of a larger god. There's not every finger of the gifted pianist part of the whole, even as it does something different from its fellows. I am God, but the finger of God, a particle. As we all are, as is everything. And you don't look well. This has been a trying interview. I could loose Dean back into the room. You might find some comfort with him. And that's another thing you've yet to explain. Why him? Tomorrow. There will be time tomorrow. I can promise that. I thought they had to die. They all would have eventually. Why me? Why did it have to be me? This is grotesque. I helped to put her here myself. But I've checked every other unit. Without being seen? Without being stopped? How the hell can this happen? I was here all the time. 
not in here all the time, but around. Call security. Have someone up there start reviewing the stupid video cameras they have all over the place. I already did. What about the father? Don't tell me. They took that too? No, it's... It's here. I, I brought it in for safekeeping. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm kind of confused about that one. What do you mean, confused? Didn't it come in as a parcel? What the hell are you talking about? It was autopsied with prelim toxin lab. It says it was cardiac arrest. Just, I remember it different. That thing at the jail was still all over the news. Are you going in? have a choice. Carry that as a shield or wield it as a weapon. Maybe both. Insurance. I thought we'd dispelled with exorcism. Listen, even if there were a devil, why would an entity strong enough to rebel against me, leading a third of the angels I created, why would he be so easily defeated when some scripture-spouting functionary waves a cross? It doesn't make much sense. No, it doesn't. Of course, it never made sense to me why, if you know everything that was and everything that will be, why you would have created Lucifer and those angels would rise against you in the first place. I know everything? You read that in a book? The idea that any entity could know everything that ever will be is ridiculous. Worse, it's pointless. If the future is already predetermined and the outcome assured, which it would have to be if I already knew what it was, then the present has no reason to exist. Why stumble from point A to B to C if no matter what, you end up at Z. Because by exercising choices, we... But you're not exercising choice. It's written that you end up at Z. You couldn't alter it if you tried because any alteration would have already been perceived and factored in, and that would then be the future that is known. Hence, all actions become meaningless. Wait. But doesn't it say in Isaiah 46? I warn you, do not try to argue with a single solitary questionable source. How is it questionable? It's your divine word. According to whom? The publisher? No profit motive there. Now I'm to accept that God is disowning the Bible? Who has more right? The only evidence it was divinely inspired are the assurances of the authors or more accurately, the translations, which even if they were 100% correct, and they're not, it still boils down to taking a long dead stranger's word for it. And you don't even know who they were. You only know who they claimed to be. There were multiple authors for the books of Moses, and the chances of them all being named Moses are pretty slim. The translation of the Bible is inaccurate. We're getting there. Most recently, the Conference of Catholic Bishops even admitted that the proper translation of Alma is 
woman of a marriageable age, not a virgin. Sorry, Mary. And how do you know the five books of Moses weren't written by Moses? How do I know? Well, that's easy. I'm God. But you mean what evidence is there? Considerable. And we could discuss that if you wish, but uh, what most amuses me are those who denigrate the evidence because it comes from mere mortal scholars. While at the same time, it's mere mortal scholars who translated the dead language into the scriptures they defend. A metaphor for your myriad religious texts that I'm quite fond of is called the mystery of the fox. Imagine someone whom you trust implicitly brings you a sealed box and tells you inside it a clock. Now, you can never open the box or x-ray it or in any way find out for sure what's inside except to take the word of someone you trust. Now, that person has never seen the inside of the box. They got it from someone they trust and so on and so on for generations past. Now, suppose a distant neighbor approaches and they have an identical box, but they were told by someone they trust completely that the box contains a scarf. Now, you're not to be faulted if you believe boxes contain clocks, not scarves. Well, you have faith in the people who told you so. But only a deluded person could ever insist that they know for a fact what's in the box, because they don't. And if they're moral, they would never condemn their neighbor for holding an opposing belief. And only the insane would try to force acceptance of one uncertainty upon another. For most of you, your spiritual quest extends from your front door to the first sign that says, you have arrived. There's a road continuing on past that sign in clear view. Why do you refuse to see it as your creator? Such short-sightedness is wont to propel me to apocalyptic rage. This is Detective Herrera. Okay, hold on a second. You're gonna have to run that past me one more time. What do you mean it's gone? So God rejects his holy Bible. When it's not just propagating myths, much of it is enlightening. Of course, those same truths are also in the Quran, the Tripitaka, and the Sutras, the Bhagavad Gita, all muddied by their own myths, of course. Still, good first steps. But as a historical document, it is flawed. And as a basis for social control, as many would use it, it is dangerous, as they all can be. I found Dean McCallum most appropriate because he's the perfect example of both the best and the worst of what you should be. He did think of others before himself. He subsumed his desires and wants rather than risk harm to any. Casey Emerson is the paradigm. So he was a thoughtful man with a hungry mind and a questioning intellect. Except. Except he chose to help Casey Emerson by giving her faith. Instead of helping that despairing young woman understand the constraints on the conditions one fragile life are transient, if had her non-answers, and mysterious promises. But when you're in a position to lead someone towards the light, what is to be accomplished? Steering them into the dusk. Excuse me, <laughs> officer. Jesus. I thought everyone had been pulled out of here. I need someone to help me, please. We have no Dean McCollum. He's not in the system. Do you have an alternate ID? Something as paltry as that. You devastate a man's existence for that? For an endless accumulation of such incidents, I would do far more. And I would remind you of two things, little man. First, I was going to use someone. I chose this body, and I chose Heather, and you could say I chose them for you. And second, you would do well not to consider 
any priorities of mine as insignificant. Perhaps in the grand scheme, what seems trifling to you could prove of monumental importance. You condone and perpetuate violent suffering. Allow the horrors we inflict upon each other. Express dismay that we haven't figured out it's all part of some plan. And on that basis, you'd be done with us. Well, just tell us what it is we've missed. If there was some plan you intended us to follow, fuck it. Just tell us what it is. Why should I make things that easy? Do you not think I could have created one unarguable set of rules available to everyone at all times so there could be no doubt as to my meaning? That was the ultimate purpose, and I couldn't manage it. What kind of a bumbling clown god would I be? And there you have the most obvious and significant clue ever laid before you. It's been the most relentlessly ignored. If there were only one chance for the big brass ring, I'd be a callous god indeed if my word and actions were inconsistent. But if the search were everything, how then does this world appear? From the dawn, when one sentient creature first made connection with another, a consideration of ethics had begun. Right and wrong existed long before religion. Ultimate truth. It's not like your favorite music. It's not defined by what you personally prefer or what you grew up listening to. If you want to get beyond these temporary shells you inhabit, you have to find and embrace that ultimate truth and do so ultimately. What is it? We'll knock on fucking doors. Maybe somebody saw something. We'll get your sergeant's permission and then get back to you. Heather Kadar has gone missing. Missing, as in? As in she's not where she's supposed to be, considering she's dead. All right. You brought me to a place where I have no idea what to do next. And that is not a good place for me to be. You wanted to get my attention, shock me, frighten me. Well, then you fucking well got your wish. Between your predisposition to believe force solves anything, your reverence of greed and power, your elevation of stupidity, your pathological avoidance of empathy, your commitment to cruelty. It's easy to despise your kind. Yes, early on you accepted fairy tales and stories, but you refused to give them up for growing faster and stronger and infinitely more virulent than your ability to reason was your capacity for vanity and ego. But if you want to know a secret, I'll tell you. At your core, on a level more protean than the simple cellular one, and the very invisible dust that binds you to the universe, you all know that you are not special. You are not unique. But in your refusal to accept the very worthlessness that actually makes you significant, you cling to willful ignorance. You shutter your vision and shackle your reason, and all in the pathetic delusion that you are more special than someone else. And to prove it, your god loves only you. Do you think that weapon gives you control? You think your laws, your armies, your gods do? You are subject to a thousand variables and you have been given control over only one thing. And the value of your existence is measured by that which cannot be known by others or applauded by strangers or worshipped by history. Must fire rain from the heavens in order for you to find it.
¿Qué se llama eso? He said I should wait for you. Who's this? I don't know. What happens now? I think I'd like to go home now. Well, here we go, it's a hell of a show And all it will cost is a yes It's filthy, unclean And nothing you've seen will prepare you for this sort of mess Oh, for the stars that shimmer And down here we're stuck, the Weirdo Deluxe quite a time and I'm certain that I'm rather guilty of dozens of sins Oh for the ways that Desert and Dante instruct the Weirdo Deluxe It's more And don't be surprised If one day you arise And have lost all the ones you adore Oh, for the days of pleasure When nobody sucks The Weirdo Deluxe Oh 